This video is to show a complete overhauling of a diesel engine Isuzu 4JA1, bolt torque tightening sequence, timing gear setting, and valve tappet clearance. Clean the inside and the outside surface, and the oil holes. Prepare all gaskets. Clean the cylinder thread holes. Now install the bearings. The crankshaft upper bearing has an oil hole and an oil groove. Take note. Do not apply oil to the bearing back faces and to the bearing cap surfaces. Install the crankshaft thrust bearing to the crankshaft center journal. The crankshaft thrust bearing oil groove must face the sliding face. Make sure to apply an ample coat of oil to the crankshaft journals and to the crankshaft bearing surfaces before installing the crankshaft. Apply high temperature resistant silicone to the cylinder body number 5 bearing cap. Make sure that the silicone does not abstract the cylinder thread holes in the bearing. The bearing cap arrow mark must be facing the front of the engine. The number on the arrow mark must correspond to the journals, to which the bearing cap is installed. Apply oil to the bearing cap bolts.
Tighten the crankshaft bearing cap bolt to the specified torque in two steps, following the numerical orders shown on the screen. The first step for the crankshaft bearing cap bolt torque is 70 foot-pound. Proceed to the second step. Crankshaft bearing cap bolt torque is 120 foot-pound, following the numerical orders shown on the screen. Apply oil to the piston pin. The piston head front mark. And the connecting rod Isuzu casting mark must be facing the same direction. Install the piston pin. Take note, do not apply oil to the bearing cap back faces and the connecting rod bearing fitting surfaces. Wipe any oil or other foreign material from the connecting rod bearing cap back faces. Install the piston snap ring. Install the connecting rod bearing cap. The side of the bearing cap and the connecting rod number must be the same. Set up the connecting rod to the crankshaft journals to check the bearing movement. 
The first is, set up piston connecting rod number 1. The bearing cap front mark must be facing the front of the engine. Connecting rod cap bolt torque is 65 foot pound. Next is, set up piston connecting rod number 2. Next is, set up piston connecting rod number 3. Set up piston connecting rod number 4. Install timing gear case with gasket. Timing gear case bolt torque is 17.3 foot pound. Camshaft timing gear bolt torque is 86.8 foot pound. Apply a coat of engine oil to the camshaft journals and at the camshaft bearing. Apply oil to the tappet body and make sure that the tappet is installed before inserting the camshaft. Install the thrust plate bolt and tight with bolt torque 17.3 foot-pound. Now we proceed to install the cylinder liners. Clean the cylinder liner and the cylinder bore. Remove all foreign material from cylinder liner and cylinder bore. Before installation, 
Use special tools to install the cylinder liners. After setting the tools, make sure to check the angle of the cylinder liner. Insert the cylinder liner into the cylinder body bore. Make sure that the cylinder liner is fully inserted. Avoid hitting on the liner flange, it may be bent then you will have a problem. Install the piston rings in the order shown on the screen. Now install the oil piston ring. Install the expander coil into the oil piston ring groove. Deviate the gap of the oil piston ring 180 degrees from the expander coil joint. Install the second compression ring, tapered undercut type. And now install the first compression ring. Piston ring gap spaced is approximately 120 degrees. Use a piston ring compressor to install the piston to the cylinder liner. Install piston and connecting rod number 1. When installing the piston, avoid pushing more, just enough when all piston rings are inserted. Be careful and make sure that the connecting rod will not touch the crankshaft journal. The piston head mark must be faced in front of the engine. Install piston and connecting rod number 4.
Be careful to check the connecting rod bearing cap marking. It must be installed on the same number. The bearing cap must be installed in the correct direction. The improper direction will create serious damage to the engine. Install piston and connecting rod number 2. And now install piston and connecting rod number 3. Tightening the connecting rod cap bolt to 65.1 foot pound. Now install the oil pump and make sure that the oil pipe is having a good rubber ring. The oil pump mounting bolt torque is 17.3 foot-pounds. This is an oil pressure relief valve. It works to maintain oil pressure lubricate internal components of the engine. Check the tension of the spring. If the valve stock up in a closing position, the oil pressure is going more. It may cause to damage the oil filter. And when the valve stock up in a fully open position, the oil pressure to spray and lubricate the piston is going more. And the oil pressure to lubricate the other engine component will be less. And it may cause damage to the engine itself. Tighten the pipe holder bolt to 17.3 foot pound. The oil pump relief valve torque is 60 foot pounds. Tighten the nozzle holder to 7.2 foot pound.
Check the valve seat contact faces for roughness and unevenness. Check the valve spring height, the standard height is 49.7 mm, and the limit height is 48.2 mm. Install first the valve spring lower washer before installing the valve stem oil seal. Use a spring compressor to install the split collar valve lock. Install the cylinder head gasket. Don't forget to install the two cylinder head alignment dowel. Put oil to the cylinder head bolt. Tighten the cylinder head bolt to the specified torque in two step. Follow the numerical orders shown on the screen. The first step cylinder bolt torque is 65.1 foot pounds. The second step cylinder head bolts torque is 79.6 foot pound. Now proceed to the timing gears setting. Apply oil to the idler gear and the idler gear shaft. Align the idler gear to the crankshaft timing gear with the same timing gear marking and idler gear to the camshaft gear with the same timing gear mark. The idler gear number 1 bolt torque is 17.3 foot-pounds. Now install the injection pump idler gear shaft. Turn the idler side tension gear and locate the lock insert bolt hole. On the other side, locate the threaded hole then insert the bolt and tighten. Now install the injection pump timing idler gear. Align the idler gear with the same timing gear mark. The injection pump idler gear shaft bolt torque is 63 foot-pound. Tie with the steel wire to hold the injection pump while installing the timing gear cover. After setting the injection pump idler gear with the same timing gear mark, then pull out the gear tension holder bolt.
Install the timing cover with bolt torque of 17.3 foot-pounds. Tight the crankshaft pulley bolt with the bolt torque of 177 foot-pounds. Now install the push rods. Turn the camshaft and check the movement of the push rods. Before installing the rocker's arm, make sure to release all the valve clearance adjusting screws. Now tighten the rocker arm shaft bracket bolts. Follow the numerical orders shown on the screen. And the rocker arm shaft bracket bolt torque is 43.4 foot-pounds. Now we proceed to the valve clearance adjustment. Turn the engine pulley going right. Wait till the rocker arm on cylinder number 4 will slightly push the intake valve. Remember that the running mate of piston number 1 is piston number 4. And now the crankshaft damper pulley TDC or top dead center is aligned with the timing pointer. If the number 1 cylinder intake and the exhaust valve push rod have a play, the number 1 piston is a TDC on the compression stroke. Remember that the engine firing orders are 1342. We have to start the valve clearance adjustments on cylinder number 1. The valve clearance is 0.40 mm. Insert the feeler gauge between the rocker arm and the valve stem end. Turn the valve clearance adjusting screw. Swipe the feeler gauge. Slightly drag can be felt on the feeler gauge, then tighten the lock nut securely. Same procedure to the exhaust valve adjustment. Again, turn the crankshaft pulley going right. Continue to set the valve clearance on cylinder number 3. And the running mate of piston number 3 is piston number 2. Wait till the rocker arm on cylinder number 2 will slightly push the intake valve. If the number 3 cylinder intake and exhaust push rod has a play, the number 3 piston is a TDC on the compression stroke. Now you can set the valve clearance on cylinder number 3 with the same procedure. To find the TDC on the compression stroke of piston number 4, now turn again the crankshaft pulley going right. While turning the crankshaft pulley, wait till cylinder number 1 push rod will slightly push the intake valve. Remember that piston number 4 is the running mate of piston number 1. Now cylinder number 4 is a TDC on the compression stroke. Set up the valve clearance with the same procedure.
Next is to set up the valve clearance of cylinder number 2. Again, turn the crankshaft pulley going right. Because the running mate of piston number 2 is piston number 3, while turning the crankshaft pulley, wait till cylinder number 3 push rod will slightly push the intake valve. Now cylinder number 2 is a TDC on the compression stroke. Set up the valve clearance of 0.40 mm. For the intake and the exhaust valve, turn the valve clearance adjusting screw, swipe the feeler gauge, slightly drag can be felt on the feeler gauge, then tighten the lock nut securely, because the firing orders are 1342, the last cylinder valve clearance to set is cylinder number 2, and now, the cylinder valve clearance setting to the engine is complete. Before installing the injectors, install the injection nozzle into the nozzle tester. Use the nozzle tester to apply compressed fuel at 2630 psi to the injection nozzle. Test the injection nozzle for a possible body fuel leakage. After checking, now install the injectors. The injector nozzle holder bolt torque is 31.8 foot-pounds. Install the glow plug and the glow plug power connector. Install the injector fuel return pipe. Install intake manifold. The first is to install injector pipe number 2. Followed by injector pipe number 3. And the next is injector pipe number one. And the last pipe for injector number four. Install the oil filter housing with a built-in oil cooler. Install exhaust manifold. Don't forget to close all turbo pipe while installing the engine. Any small particles that may fall inside, it may cause damage to the turbocharger. Hope this video will help. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.